Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So people are always talking about Tesla's electric vehicle competition, but I rarely see anybody talking about their competition on the energy side. And I would actually argue that this is more important. So we know that Tesla is the first EV company from the ground up, so there really isn't any direct competition just yet. But when you look at the energy side, there are companies that have been in the renewable energy market for decades. But the billion dollar question then becomes, is there any competition standing in the way of Tesla achieving their dominance in the energy sector just like they have in the EV space so far? In this episode, we'll take a closer look at Tesla's true energy division competition. And just so we're all on the same page, the renewable energy market is super fragmented. There are all different types of companies doing different things. There are always new startups popping up. But in this episode, I want to focus on Tesla's most formidable competition that they will really have to outdo in the coming years. So the global solar energy market was about $50 billion in 2018, and that is expected to hit $225 billion by the middle of this decade. The grid scale battery storage market was about $3 billion globally last year, and that number is expected to hit $20 billion by the middle of the decade. And then we have the residential energy storage market that was about $8 billion last year, and these figures are expected to hit about $20 billion by the middle of the decade as well. And look, I could go a lot further with these numbers, but the point here is that this market is a big deal. And as Elon has told us, the energy division for Tesla should eventually rival their auto division. So first up, let's take a look at Nextera, headquartered in Juneau Beach, Florida. They claim to be the world's largest producer of wind and solar energy, with their website showing us 45,000 megawatts of net generation capacity, or about 45 gigawatts. But here's where things get a little complicated. So this company also owns power plants that run on natural gas nuclear and oil. So it's actually a subsidiary of theirs or a separate division called Nextera Energy Resources that is actually responsible for the solar and wind generation. And yes, Nextera is a publicly traded company, ticker NEE, and they're currently sitting at about $160 billion market cap. But the thing is, they're a full-blown utility company, so they're not a pure play renewable energy company. That said though, they are deploying about two gigawatts of renewable energy capacity every quarter, whereas Tesla did roughly two gigawatts over the last four quarters combined. And Nextera also said that they have a 15 gigawatt hour backlog over the next few Few years and Tesla has said something similar but they just said it's in the gigawatt scale so it could be two gigawatts for Tesla in terms of a backlog or it could be 10 gigawatts we just don't know for sure and a big question for companies in this space is are they operating profitably of course so next Terra their energy division specifically is profitable to the tune of 375 million dollars in gap net profit for their most recent quarter so next Terra definitely will be one of Tesla's main competitors in the commercial solar deployment space as well as the utility grid storage but before we move on they have a really cool service where they offer energy plans for certain states that are powered by 100% renewable energy so I did take a look because they have plans offered in Pennsylvania which is where I live and they had plans listed at about five dollars per kilowatt hour if you're interested i did include a link below if you want to take a look to see if they offer these plans where you live but let's shift to the residential market where we have zonin a german company operating on a global footprint so this company started back in 2010 but over the last decade they have made a really good name for themselves they are global leaders in this space and they're recognized as one of the top technology companies in europe their focus is on residential home energy solutions so they will be directly competing with tesla's powerwall and if you see the gmbh after their name this is just a German acronym meaning it's a privately held company. Zonin was actually acquired by the oil conglomerate Shell back in 2019. So Zonin has the Eco, which is a home battery solution, and then they also have the Eco Links, which adds some smart home automation things like tracking the weather in case there's a storm coming so it can make sure that your battery is charged in case of a storm. But the key here is that the Eco and the Eco Links really are luxury products. So you're looking at anywhere from fifteen dollars to $30,000 depending on the size and configuration. But their newest product, the Sonin Core, has a 10 kilowatt hour capacity and goes for about $9,500 without installation. This can be compared to Tesla's Powerwall which has about a 13.5 kilowatt hour capacity and goes for about $7,500. So it's actually the Sonin Core that will really be a direct competitor to Tesla's Powerwall. But honestly, one of the coolest things that Zonin is doing is VPPs or virtual power plants. So they're connecting like homes and apartments that are localized 
and then creating a decentralized renewable energy grid. So these virtual power plants can actually provide independence from the grid in some cases, but in others, at least it offers some backup energy storage for a localization of homes or apartments. And so real quick, just in case you're in this market, the best way to compare these products is to look at the dollars per kilowatt hour with the installation costs included. And look, the point of this video is not to be like a technical review comparison of any of these products. It's just to give you a high level overview and to put some names on your radar for you to track in the coming months and years. Another name to watch in the home energy storage market is LG Chem as they have their Resu 10, which is available in the United States. And they just released a newer updated version. It's a 16 kilowatt hour version, but that will only be available for now in Australia. And yes, these products are indeed from LG Chem, the one that you're probably familiar with, and their most recent energy division spinoff, LG Energy Solutions. The Resu 10 can be had for about $7,000 before installation, and it is a modular system, meaning you can pair multiples together, just like all of the products I've mentioned so far. And look, we can't forget about solar panels because these home battery energy storage solutions aren't that effective effective if there's no way to actually generate renewable energy. And LG Chem also happens to make some of the best solar panels on the market. And the solar panel space has seen some serious improvements in the last few years, so the warranties across the board are usually about 25 years, but the annual degradation rates have gone from about 1% a year down to 0.5%. So they've been cut in half in just the last few years. And what that means is that before, after 25 years, you would be left with about 70 to 75% of the original performance, whereas now those numbers are anywhere from 85 to 90% after 25 years. And LG Chem's energy division can be thought of as a direct competitor to Tesla because they do everything. They do battery manufacturing, solar manufacturing, and they also offer home energy storage solutions. And yes, Panasonic is right in the mix as well. If you remember, they were actually making these solar cells for Tesla's solar roof at Giga New York, those operations have since ceased, but they are still a massive player in the space. They offer very compelling solar panels, they have home energy storage solutions, and they are a huge player in the battery manufacturing market. So once again, just like LG Chem, they're going to be a big competitor to Tesla. And I want to wrap this video up with some key takeaways and some actionable items. In my opinion, Tesla by far has the most appealing and the sexiest branding in the space, but LG and Panasonic are very reputable names that have been around for a long time. They've earned a lot of trust from customers and they're not going anywhere. But the good news here is that the renewable energy market at scale is still in its infancy with policy changes coming to the United States and climate change becoming a bigger deal on a global scale. The whole market still feels like it's at an inflection point on the S curve ready to take off. And if you actually want exposure to this renewable energy space over the next five to 10 years without having to track specific companies, because like I said, it is such a fragmented market and stuff changes so quickly, there are ETFs out there that you can actually own to give you exposure. There are things like the Clean Edge Energy Fund, ticker QCLN. You have Invesco's Wilder Hill ETF, ticker PBW. And you have Invesco's Solar ETF, ticker TAN. And look, these aren't recommendations to go buy them. They're just some names to go take a look at if you're interested in an investment like that. So hopefully you guys have a little bit better understanding of Tesla's competition in the energy space. I have all the confidence in the world that Tesla will continue to innovate and become a market leader on the energy side. But the thing is, they're always going to have the auto division that kind of leads to their supply constraints and that's not going away anytime soon. Yes, 4680 production and making their own cells will help a great deal, but the thing is they always will have an auto division that some of these other companies like Zonin don't have. So this will add certain challenges that their competitors won't have to face. But with that, by now we should all know never to doubt Elon or your own vibe. It will, however, be really important to watch these names in the coming months and years because, as I said, some of these companies have been around for decades and there is more formidable competition in this space than Tesla has on the EV side. So I 100% believe Elon when he says that their energy division will ultimately rival their auto division. The question is how long will it take and how hard is that road going to be? Of course, nobody knows for sure, but the point of this episode was to give you some names and some ideas and some things to track, put on your Twitter feed, stuff to check in regularly to see the latest developments at some of these companies to see what Tesla is really up against. But that's all I have for you guys today. Please like the video if you did. Consider subscribing if you're into that type of thing. Uh, but with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day. <clears throat> And some of the most forbid. <clears throat>
so the glow so first up like <laughs> resources that is response there's <clears throat> in the solar deployment So these virtual power pen, and just a quick note, if you're in this market that globally, 